A concerning COVID-19 milestone for us at Spectrum Health. More than 200 admitted patients in our facilities under the care of our team now. Hundreds testing positive each day. The positivity rate reported Tuesday reached 14%. With us now to add some clarity and context to the numbers we're seeing is the president of Spectrum Health West Michigan, Dr. Daryl Elmucci. Dr. Elmucci, thanks for taking the time to be with us. I know it's a busy time. First of all, can you put into context uh, the numbers we're seeing and why there's such concern here on our team? Yeah, well, thank you very much for having me. And I'll tell you that the numbers we're seeing now uh, are far, far higher than anything we've seen since this pandemic began. We all talk about and read about and hear about surges and we really never had a first surge here in west michigan we clearly did on the east side of the state but the maximum number of inpatients spectrum health saw at any of our hospitals at one time in may was 85. what is our ability to handle this in the spring of course we saw a shutdown of many of the services we offer to our patients uh, we haven't seen that happen why did we see that then and we're not seeing that now if it, things are so much worse Right. That's a great question. I'd say uh, if you think back to the spring when this all just began, we really knew very little as a medical community about how COVID would explode or not in an area. We also had real shortages of PPE. We had very limited testing. Now here we are seven, eight months later, we know a lot more. A, we know this is definitely a deadly disease, but we're better at treating it. B, we have a significant amount of PPE that we didn't have before, so we feel very confident that we can protect our staff, our visitors, our patients, uh, and we have significant amount of testing. We now do approximately three to 4,000 tests per day for COVID-19, so we can really try to understand better who has COVID, who doesn't, as quickly as possible. And so all of that gives us a whole lot more confidence that we can take care of COVID patients as well as people with non-COVID-related problems. I want to share some questions with you that we are getting from the community on our Spectrum Health platforms. Uh, and one of them is the question about mask wearing. They say that we're seeing a mask being worn at a lot of places. Uh, they're required in many of our businesses, but the numbers are still going up. Is it an indication that the masks are not working? Yeah, so I hear this question a lot. I understand it. And I, I could say this and I'll use an analogy that someone recently told me. Uh, Seatbelts. I'm hoping that all of us wear seatbelts when we drive. People still can die in car accidents from seatbelts, but they die less frequently when they wear a seatbelt. The same is true of masking. Masking doesn't cure or prevent COVID from happening, but it makes it less likely to spread, and that's good for all of us. What about the numbers? That's another big source of contention. Folks are saying, well, we're just doing more testing. That's why we're seeing the numbers rise. How do you respond to that question? Yeah, you know, quite honestly, I wish that were the case. It definitely is not. So here at Spectrum Health, as an example, as I mentioned, we've been doing between three and 4,000 tests per day for now probably three to four months. Our number of tests hasn't really increased. In spite of that, our percent positivity or the number of tests that come back positive every day was steadily in the one to 3% range all summer. And now over the last three to four weeks, we've gone up to over 10%. That has nothing to do with the number of tests we've done because that number is relatively stable. It has to do with the number of people in our community that now have COVID. And that number is very frightening to us because we see it go up really quickly. And the more you have positive in the community, the more likely in one week, two weeks, three weeks, you'll see much sicker people that need admission to your hospital. Another question we're getting is about the flu. And they're saying, all we're hearing about is the coronavirus. Did the flu magically disappear in the midst of this? Yeah, so, you know, we're, we're obviously everyone's talked a lot about the flu and a few things I'll remind everyone. First of all, it is pretty early to see flu on a given year. Usually flu starts late fall into early winter. So November, December is when we usually start seeing flu. And sometimes we can have a delayed flu season where we don't start seeing it until January, February time. We haven't seen much flu now. We're hoping that means it will be a mild flu season. We also recognize that all of these things we're doing to prevent COVID transmission like masking, like social distancing, those will help limit the amount of flu. But the fact that we haven't seen flu at this point doesn't mean anything other than we haven't seen flu yet at this point. How significantly is the number of COVID-19 patients that we're having impacting our capacity? Are we nearing capacity? And is that a concern? So we definitely have more capacity. 
the area or the things that we worry about as a community, and this is not just Spectrum Health, but all the health systems and the public health officials in our community, is much more what care will we have to minimize or push back or delay because we're caring for more and more COVID patients. And our sincere hope is that we can continue to care for everyone regardless of their circumstance now and into the future and not have to limit that because of COVID. So over the coming weeks, that will really test all of us, but our hope is we can still care for everyone with a heart attack, a stroke, a car accident, and COVID patients. But this could be a significant issue if these COVID patients go up and up and up like some of the models predict. Do you think that we are at the top of a surge or are you concerned that we're gonna see these numbers surpass 200 and, and continue to rise? Yeah, I, there's no doubt in my mind that we are nowhere near the peak of the surge we're in now. And the reason I can say that very confidently is based on that percent positivity we're seeing of tests in the community that has very rapidly risen over the last few weeks. And that number predicts what happens in the future. It doesn't predict today. So if you diagnose with COVID today, chances are in the beginning, you feel not so bad, sick, but not so bad but people tend to be hospitalized one week or so after they're diagnosed. And so we're very worried what's to come. And I am certain this will keep going up. My, my sincere desire and hope is that we find a way to slow that down and flatten the curve in the coming days. What are you seeing in terms of the intensity of illness in the patients that we're experiencing now compared to the patients that we saw back in the spring? So there's been a lot in the media about the death rate from COVID, how bad of an illness it is. Uh, and I'll be honest and say, for the vast majority of people, COVID is anything from asymptomatic to a mild to moderate illness that you can ride out at home and usually do very well. However, there still are a percentage of people that get sick enough to come into the hospital. And there absolutely are people that get into the ICU that require a breathing machine and unfortunately that die from COVID. And so COVID is absolutely a deadly disease. And in our hospitals today, we have young people, we have old people, we have people with comorbidities and people that really were healthy that all have COVID and all are severely ill. So I would tell everyone, you do not want COVID. We, no one wants to get COVID. What we're all hoping for is that we can stave this off until there's a vaccine that's safe and effective for us all to use. What is your message to folks who think this has been overblown, they're sick of these restrictions and are ready to just move on with life? Yeah, so, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about health and COVID versus the economy, and it's one or the other. And I think it's pretty clear you can't have one without the other. If we as a society could all just do some of the basic things, wear our masks really all the time when we're in public, avoid large gatherings, wash our hands well, social distance, if we can do all the right things, we can keep everything going and everyone open. And trust me when I say all of us want our restaurants, our local businesses, we all want them to stay open. The problem I'm worried about is based on what we're seeing now, it could get so much worse here that suddenly things do shut down and that's the last thing anyone wants. So I'd ask everyone to reframe, it's not the economy or COVID, it's the economy and COVID. Dr. Daryl Almucci, president of Spectrum Health West Michigan, thank you so much for uh, sharing your insight. We'll certainly be in touch uh, as this continues to um, be an important issue here in our community. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. The basics are simple and boil down to three W's. Wear a mask, wait six feet apart, avoid close contact, wash your hands often or use hand sanitizer. These steps alone can help slow the spread of this virus. We're all in this together.